Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Josephine Ko and I'm a Bosendorfer concert pianist. But most of you will also know me as the author of music theory books. Yes, I'm a music educator here in Singapore at the Josephine Ko Piano Academy. If you have just joined me, no worries. I've recently started a series of videos on music theory lessons and diploma piano lessons. So go check them out. Today, I'm going to teach topic one from the grade six workbook, which is harmony, basics and techniques. Usually, I would teach topic one to older teenage students or adult students. But for younger students, I normally start with topic five, which has been presented in my previous video on chord symbols. So in today's lesson, I would like to cover one of the important foundational concepts of harmony, mainly voicing and doubling. But before we do that, let us just revise keys and key signatures. It is usually helpful for students to revise the system of keys and key signatures. I would get them to fill out a table of the sharps and the flat keys. Going with the concept of the circle of fifths and fourths, I would get them to build a table like this. To start with, we put forth C major, which has no key signature and its relative key of A minor. Building a perfect fifth from C major, it would be G major, with the key signature of F sharp and relative minor key of E minor. The concept of a perfect fifth above G major will be D major. And a perfect fifth from F sharp would be C sharp. The relative minor key similarly from E minor would be B minor. The table can easily be filled out like this. Likewise, with keys on the flat side, we can start with F major which has a key signature of B flat and the relative minor of D minor. By the circle of fourth from F major, we would arrive at B flat major, which has a key signature of B flat and E flat. A perfect fourth from D minor would form G minor. Using the same system, we can build up perfect fourth from each of these keys and key signatures and we can fill out the table. Isn't it simple? Let us now turn to the grade 6 workbook. Topic 1 on how many basics and techniques. Let's look at page 2. In writing out chords, one can use either the keyboard style or to write for four part voices which is soprano or to tenor bass. Here is an example of keyboard style. You can have two, three, or more parts in each hand. In writing for keyboard, it is necessary to ensure that the notes are well spaced for the comfort of the hands. In writing up for four voices on a short score, soprano and alto would share the treble stave, and tenor and bass would share the bass stave. The soprano and tenor voices would have up stems, and the alto and bass voices would have down stems. The ranges of the various voices are laid out here. For soprano, for alto, for tenor, and for bass. Here are the triads of the C major scale. I've written them using basic Roman numerals without the qualities for the purpose of explanation. You will notice that in the triads of 1, 4, and 5, these three triads consist all the notes of the C major scale. Let us call these primary triads. For these triads to become chords, of which to write for keyboard or for four-part voices, soprano, or to tenor bass, it is necessary to double one of the notes in all these triads. The lowest note of a triad in root position is called the root, this is called the third, and this is called the fifth. 
The other triads, we shall call them secondary triad, which are 2, 3, 6, and 7. You will notice that primary chords of 1, 4, and 5 form cadences. 5, 1 for a perfect cadence. 1, 5 for an imperfect cadence. 4, 5 for an imperfect cadence. A plagal cadence with 4, 1. So, let us look at page 4 in the workbook. When using primary chords 1, 4, and 5, we would double the root note in the root position and the first inversion. These chords are also used in the second inversion, of which we will double the fifth of the chord. For secondary chords like 2, 3, 6, and 7, it is common to double the third of the chord. We usually double the third of the chord in its root and first inversion. The second inversion of these chords are usually not used. Tonal degrees refer to the tonic, subdominant, and dominant notes of any key. In C major, they would be C, F, and G. Let me now show you how to write the primary chords in their various positions. When we write a tonic triad in root position, we double the root of the chord. When we write the primary chord in first inversion, we double also the root of the chord. Thus, we have C, C, E, G. When we write the chord in second inversion, it will be C, E, G, G. The reason being a second inversion chord is usually weak and the bass note needs to be doubled. When writing a secondary chord in root position, we double the third of the chord. Thus, D, F, F, A. We can also write the secondary triad or chord in first inversion. Thus, D, F, F, A. A secondary chord, chord 7, can be written like this, B, D, D, F. Bearing in mind, with the leading note triad, the leading note can never be doubled. Similarly, in the first inversion, the leading note chord can be written as B, D, D, F. You will notice that the spacing between the soprano and alto, alto and tenor, are always kept within an octave. More than an octave is allowed between tenor and bass voice. Well, isn't it easy? You can now do the exercises on pages 5 and 6. Bear in mind that the chords on page 6 are to be written in the minor keys. Do remember to add the accidentals for the leading notes in the minor keys. If you like what I've done for you today, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel below. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson where I shall cover harmony, basics and techniques on chord progressions. See you soon!